six beats. I bet y'all niggas thought that we was finished. I bet y'all niggas thought it was the ending. I bet y'all niggas thought that we was falling off. But this is only the beginning. I bet y'all niggas thought that we was finished. Y'all niggas thought it was the ending I bet y'all Real life street stars We in here with Ace Sinatra and T Lafayette What's good with it? What's, what's happening what's baby? What's up? Man for everybody Deaf, dumb, stupid Been living up under a rock Acting like they don't know Tell them where you're from And how long y'all been doing y'all thing Well I'm originally from Chi-Town, Chicago, Illinois but um, I've been up in here around, actually today marks my eight year anniversary for moving down to Dallas. So Woo. congrats for that. Amen. You know what I'm saying? Um, shoot, how long I've been doing it? Shit, for a long time. If I had to, I had to kill you, if I tell you. <laughs> <laughs> very, very long time since high school though, really. Amen. I've been doing music before that. Yeah, um, I'm Ace Sinatra and uh, I'm from Florida, all over Florida really. Uh, I grew up, uh, moved around. I stayed in Atlanta for a while. Um, like you say, we've been in uh, we've been in Texas, Dallas, for about eight years now. Uh, been doing the music since I was a kid. You know what I'm saying? With the uh, I had a tape recorder. I used to walk around just recording songs off the radio on the B side. You did. So everybody wants to know. You know what I'm saying? How'd y'all end up in the battle rap circuit? Well, uh, uh, you know, back in the day, it was about when I first moved to Dallas, I was doing uh, collections, you know what I mean? And, I, you know, everybody who do collections is, for some reason, everybody who do customer service, they're a rapper. You know, not everybody's good. Boy, I thought you was going to say, I was, collect I was, what type of collections? Nah. Because you, you look like the nigga that, are, hey, <laughs> we, we need that. Right. right. <laughs> hey, I was, I was actually pretty good, though. For yeah. real. I, I was actually pretty good. You know what I mean? Give us the finesse line, bro. That, that you. <laughs> Shout out to everybody at EOS, <laughs> CMI, you know. But, yeah, I was actually uh, in collections, and, uh, you know, I linked up with uh, Trebo Dose. Shout out to Trebo. Um Dose. And uh, he told me about those secretly sneaking niggas in. I see. You. I see yeah, you. yeah. <laughs> uh, he told me, man. You know, uh, we we collaborated. We talked and chopped it up. And he uh, invited me out to the live from the block uh, events. And I went. All it took was one time for me to go because everything music is me. You know, in the studio, freestyling. Uh, I've never done battle rap. You know, I used to watch Cassidy, and you know, you know, I knew a little bit about it, but. Um, it interested me, you know. It sparked something in me when I went to one event. So uh, I, I told her about it. I brought her with me. And uh, same thing, you know, it lit a fire. Next thing you know, we on the boot camp car. <laughs> right, I was like, this is that shit, man. We got to come back. We couldn't make it out to the next one. We went to Shocktober. That was my first one. It was actually um, the last Shocktober. And, man, it was lit. It was very entertaining. Bars, you know, I fuck with bars especially with the way music has been going as of late. People out here starving for bars, so I think battle rap was like, ooh, for me at that time, you know what I'm saying? I'm like, hell yeah, we gotta come back. And then I was like, shoot, I can fuck with this, man. I gotta get in the booth, for real. I mean, I gotta get in that ring, you know? He was like, you sure you wanna do that? I'm like, hell yeah, I know I can do it. Shout out to Osama the Great for giving us for a real. shot, man. Shout out to Osama the opportunity. The battle rap club, my nigga. Yeah. Man, how was it battling a dude? How was it battling the dude? Yeah. I mean. How is that? I never, that was my first battle ever, so I can't really compare it to anything else, but this is mute. this is rap. It's male dominated, so battling the dudes, I'm, I've always been surrounded by dudes. Right. That's the rap life. <laughs> right. So it, it was funny though. It was fun, actually. One last question on battle rap. Who do y'all want to see next? Next, I don't, I, I really, it doesn't matter to me. Um, I write per my opponent. So whoever also give me, uh, you know, I go straight to their Facebook, of course, social media. Uh, <laughs> I look at their pictures. I had your pro profile. And see, that's, that's the thing about me in school. I was, I was real good at roasting. I had to be. I'm a big boy, you know what I'm saying? So they used to come at me, but I'm like, nigga, you know, fire back. So 
uh, it's good for me to I just go on my opponent Facebook and, and look at their pictures and uh, just take it from there, really. Take. Um, I would. I would probably, if I could, prefer a girl. I would like to get up in there with a female. Um, a dude, I mean, it's the same thing. Whoever also throw at me, I told him too. Just whoever you throw at me. I had a certain person in mind when I first came in this, but also was like, no, you ain't ready. You know what I'm saying? You need to get your feet wet. You got to go through boot camp. And you know, I know this is what he do. That's his shit, so I respect it. I'm like, well, whatever you need me to do, whatever, you know, tunnel channels I got to go through, I'm going to do that, and, you know, so whoever he throw at me, you know, I'm ready. Uh, ready. Yeah. Explain Remedy Music. Is that the label? Is that the group? Uh, what, what is that? Remedy, the Remedy is basically um, <clears throat> the cure or an answer to all this mumble rap, to all this people, uh, a lot of artists or rappers uh, rapping about things they haven't been through, nothing they've experienced. Uh, just it's basically fake. Everybody's copying everybody, uh, and and back in the day when I was growing up, everybody was original. You know, you had so many artists, and every and it was it was like uh, sacrilegious to bite somebody's style. It was whack. For real. You know, these days you got ten niggas sound like Young Thug, ten niggas want to be Gucci, ten niggas want to be Wayne. Future. Future. You know, Drake. Drake. Everybody sound like Drake. Like be original. So. And we, we named our group uh, The Remedy. We used to be TAs, you know. Uh, of course, I'm ACT. We used to be TAs, but we changed it to The Remedy, man, to to combat this whack music. And if you if you listen to our music, it's totally different. Like, if we haven't been through it or experienced it or if it's not real-life situations, we won't even rap about it. We won't even make a song about it. So being that y'all are The Remedy to, we'll say, what is infecting hip-hop, what is y'all approach to, you know, kind of exterminate what's been going on? What are y'all gonna do differently? Cause we, like you say, a lot of it's a it's a lot of people that's got bars too. You know what I'm saying? We we got a lot of trash, but we got bars. Right, you know what right. I'm saying? So what's different about Remedy? Well, what I think is different about us, like he said, first of all, we rap about real life stuff. Like we rap about being on our nine to five job. You know what I'm saying? Like a lot of people that's first coming out. They still working nine to five. They ain't really getting it like they portray themselves to be getting it. And, you know, people think that shit real. Mm -hmm. And it's not shit. Yeah, we still work nine to five. We, well, not no more. You know, I own my own company now, but. Yeah, Shout out amen. to the black entrepreneurs. Yes, sir. You know, but, you know, we was working a nine to five and we rapped about that shit. You know, we rap about kids or you know family relationship issues relationship issues like that type of stuff and you know shit that we've been through mm -hmm. so that's that's what i think that make us different it's like more or organic mm -hmm. i would say um now y'all from two totally different parts of the world you know what i'm saying <laughs> when y'all get in the booth how do y'all make that become cohesive because you know florida got that you know what I'm saying? But Chicago got that shit too, you know what I'm saying? And, and then y'all in Dallas, so it's like y'all from such two different worlds and then y'all come here and the culture is so different. How does that, how does that come into play when y'all making y'all music? That actually works to our advantage. You know what I mean? Because uh, both of our, you know, one of our favorite groups is Outkast. And Outkast pride themselves, prided themselves on being different and coming, making different sounds and, uh, you know, just pushing the envelope. And so being that I'm from Florida, I grew up on Two Live Crew, Trick Daddy, JT Money, uh, the list goes on. You know, we had that, that booty music for a minute, 69 boys and all yeah, that. Yeah, y'all originators. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> so how did you not get influenced to make that type of music? Well, you know, I, I don't do the music, booty music thing, man. You know, right. I, I really, um, my favorite rapper growing up was uh, Juvenile. Once I heard 400 Degrees, 400 Degrees really changed my life, you know. I grew up listening to R&B. That's why I, I named myself Ace Sinatra, because the Ace is the rapper side. Sinatra is the singing side, the R&B, right. because I do R&B as well. And so, um, yeah, I, Juvenile 400 Degrees, really, that album really changed my life to make me want to start really rapping. So, you know, the booty music thing, you know, all the women was doing that, man. You know, it, it was like, it came and went so fast. It was maybe like a few years, like five years. 
think it left his stamp a little bit. They still it, it left his stamp though. It was big. It was big. <laughs> Two Live Crew changed the game. They made it where yeah. uh, there was no there was no uh, limits to what we could say on a record. Because before they were trying to have jurisdiction on what we can say, and you can't say this, and you know, Two Live Crew fought that. So, mm. big shout out to Uncle Luke them, for real. Um, man, you got a song called Fake Friends. Yeah, and, and it's and it uh, it sounds like you got done dirty. So what 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 inspired that song, man? Like, did did, did you really have uh, uh some people that that you looked at like, man, y'all ain't keeping it real? Who? <laughs> that's always the case, man. Like that's that's a, that's what I'm saying. Real life situations, like um, you meet people, and you know, sir, a lot of people or they they're agents, they yeah, they undercover agents. Like they they cool for a minute, um, and, and they when you leave, they talk about you. You know what I'm saying? Or you know, uh, they just they make you feel like, damn, you know, is it me? You know what I mean? But you realize that I'm, I'm keeping it real. I'm keeping it 100. It's these motherfuckers wearing these masks. Uh, you know, they're the problem. They're the issue. So I basically just vented on the song. You know, I don't, I don't want to hang around fake people. If you fuck with me, fuck with me when I'm not around. Uh, if you don't fuck with me, right. stay out of my face, basically. Yeah. Being in a duo group um, kind of takes away from the fact that you're um, a FMC. Not takes away, but because, you know, most people, have a struggle when they're trying to build their career about like you say it's a male dominated industry has that made it easier for you to move or does it make it like put you in a place where you got to prove yourself a little more because you're your male cohort I mean it's both I'm gonna tell you that you know what I'm saying it, I'm gonna tell you it makes it a lot easier because being a female in the game it's hard to do your grind solo <laughs> without dudes coming at you. <laughs> you know Amen. what I'm saying? Messing up the business side of it. All the time. I've been through it all. So before I met him, I was actually on my own, you know what I'm saying? And it just got muddy. So I had to leave that situation. And then me and him met. I didn't even know he did music or whatever, you know, at first. And then when he told me do, he did music and I knew how tight he was, I was like, yeah, we, you know, you need to go. So we need to link up because it makes it easier Dudes don't come at me like that, you know, because they don't know what's going on, who he is, or whatever to me. So they keep, and it just stay business, you know what I'm saying? But as far as me having to prove myself, I mean, I always like to rock with the dudes. I'm a tomboy, you know, from nature. I was jumping fences and climbing trees, and with all the scars on my knees, I was always hanging with the boys. So it's just, you know, the same shit, hanging with the boys on the track, though, on wax. <laughs> now, recently, Rick Ross made a comment that he would never sign a female artist <laughs> unless he slept with them. Sure. Uh, approximately how many CEO en engineers do you think that applies to that, that would say some shit like that? Everybody. I say, 99. I'm, I'm going to say, really, going through it, I'm going to say 98%. It might be 98% scumbag ratio. You for real, I think it's shit. a 98% of dudes that, I mean, I'm not saying they all get to smash, but they, that's probably their approach. From that's the what we do, man. We, we, are, we are sexual people, man. It's like when you go to a job. When you go to a job, you're looking at other chicks, chicks looking at you, whatever, whatever, whatever. You're going to meet somebody, y'all going to hook up. It's the same way in the studio and, you know, and, and doing music. It's just what do you want to do? Well, you want to focus on having a relationship? Or do you want to focus on the business, or do you want to do both? Can you handle doing both? Right. Some people can't handle it. Like a lot of women, uh, you know, sell themselves short, and they sleep with the the boss man, the security. Uh, you know, <laughs> and they sleep with everybody, and now you 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 tossed out the way. And you know, they have if you're mad talent, and you never hear from. If them you're gonna again. do that, you want to keep that to a minimum. Man. Right. So being that y'all do a. Um, how is it that when y'all come out and y'all do shows, how did they receive y'all? We never been booed. <laughs> ain't never been booed. Nah. People usually be rocking with it, though. Usually people be like, okay, you know, we rocking with that. Any, any females ever threw their drawers on stage when you start singing Sinatra? <laughs> uh, nah, not yet. I, <laughs> I haven't reached R. Kelly status yet. <laughs> I don't want to reach R. Kelly. Yeah, yeah. Nah, nah, right about now. That's, that's, that's that. infamy at this point. <laughs> Damn, that's everybody. Who can I say then? Who can I say? I can't say Usher. Oh, man. Well, you know, the day they said he came out and said I ain't got it. He don't even have it. 
Why I take him this? I'm, hey, that's not my business, man. <laughs> <laughs> I just know if a bitch said I had herpes, I'm coming out no, that day. We going, I'm making it. I'm going live, goddamn. Going live on all bitch. For real. <laughs> <laughs> I feel you on that. That nigga ain't make no status. That nigga Nothing. He waited two weeks. He let, he let he let do better than nigga protocol. He let niggas make a hundred memes. Right, right. I'd have posted my results that day, nigga. Right. I'm going live. Yeah, the internet will defeat you every time. <laughs> so what what is Remedy working on currently? What are we what what we got going? What are we cooking up? Rap battles, mixtape. Yeah. Uh, what well, we just dropped? Well, we in the process of dropping the mixtape. What quick, is the name? Quick mix. Quick fix. Quick fix, fix. mixtape. I gotta get on the same page, goddamn. <laughs> <laughs> it's quick. It's quick fix. Uh, quick name fix. your favorite track from the the album Eat You Let me go first. Yeah. Well, one of my favorite tracks is Fake Friends because it's just so dear to my heart. So real. So real. And, man, I like OMG. Even though I'm not technically on that track per se, I'm only on the hook. That got features on it. I love that track just because all the features, they just mesh well together. And uh, I can't wait. I like I can't wait because it bring a male-female energy you know, like it just meshed so well together with the male female energy. So those are my top three on the album. I like Celebration. Shout out to that boy Frost Two One Four. Show. He featured oh, on the record. Yeah. Shout, yeah. Shout out Frost. Shout out, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He came through and killed the he, game for us. He gave us a real icy feature on that Celebration. Go yeah. check that out on SoundCloud. Celebration, um, of course, Fake Friends. Um, Every song, man. Y'all go check it out, man. It's called Quick yeah. Fix. It's uh, 10, 10 nice songs. It's free music. Uh, y'all gonna have to pay for that album, but the, the mixtape is free, of course. Yes. I'm working on a solo album. She working on a solo project. We got another album we working on. We just do music, man. That's Why it. not? I also want to say shout out to Skits and Greaves because they featured on OMG. You know, I yeah. don't want to... Greasy516. And Skits Coleon, Skits. live on the block. Yes, block sir. shit. You know, but yeah. We, we got some shit cooking. So, where do y'all see the remedy in the next five years? Man, I see us possibly expanding out of Dallas. I don't, I don't see us just sticking in Dallas. You know what I'm saying? I think we're gonna, especially, you know what I'm saying, with, where Battle Rap take us, I think we're gonna move around this country a little bit. You know, we just really, what we doing is doing music for us. So wherever we go, that's what, you know. And like like we said, we, we own a successful cleaning service as well. You know, I don't want to con- conflict of interest and say that because- yeah, don't, say that. don't tell them niggas. Because some don't clients tell might nothing. be like, what, you a rapper? <laughs> nah, we don't tell them nothing. You know, so- <laughs> Not at all. You know, uh, Ghost owns a cleaning service. Yeah, quote unquote. <laughs> now I don't, I don't want to compare myself to that guy there. He he going through it right now. <laughs> but yeah, so um, we we a, a big thing that I pride myself on is I don't depend on music to pay my bills. Amen. Because it's not gonna do it. You are gonna have to put in work first before you see any profit. You know what I'm saying? So uh, my cleaning service is doing well. Uh, we we have other things that we do. We 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 hustlers that we make money and on on our in our downtime. Uh, <clears throat> We make music, you know what I'm saying? And the music is good. We go hard, but whatever we put, whatever your name is attached to, you're gonna go hard for it. You're supposed to go hard for it. Right. So we go hard with the music. It's just, um, we riding the wave, man. That James yeah. Brown said it, man. He said, get you a job, man. Do 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 work and then do it. Let you love it. Let that be your hobby, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? Ride the and then wave. when your hobby start paying, you switch it up. Yep. Exactly, exactly. Um, I wanna ask y'all, as the group Remedy, what is the most positive thing that y'all have encountered and what is the most shystiest thing y'all have encountered since y'all have been in the, your career? Well, the most positive thing I've encountered is um, we had a, a manager when we were formerly TAs. You know, shout out to Shahid Dion, you know. Um, Governor Flint. Governor Flint, you know, up there in Michigan. Long story, I know we shouting out a lot of cities. <laughs> Long story, but yeah, up there in um, Michigan and shit. And he was, you know what I'm saying? Like, he believed in us so much. Like, he put his all behind us. And that was like the most, you know, it was, it just took me away because he, anything we needed, you know, studio, studio time, time uh, you know, personal things, personal thing, like, he was there. He just, 
embraced us, you know what I'm he saying? He cashed out. He really did. And we wasn't even from Michigan, you know what I'm saying? So that was like real positive, real inspiring, and it let me know to keep going. Yeah. Um, Shiesty, you want to talk about the Shiesty thing you ever encountered? Uh, I mean, there's a long list of shystiness, <laughs> you know, from people uh, not wanting to work with you because they feel intimidated. Um, you know, uh, people, you know, making up stuff about you. You know, telling other people bad stuff about you before, before they have a chance to even meet you. I mean, the list of shystiness goes on. I try to just, you know, keep that up under me, man, and keep excelling. Um, and focus on the positive, man, because the negative is always going to be there. Man, I got to ask, man, who go harder? <laughs> go harder? <laughs> I mean, we don't never... I, I'm going to be the devil's advocate. <laughs> you know, you hey, yeah. <laughs> No, I think, I, I, think we, I really feel like we equally match. We have different styles, you know, from different places, but I really think Facts. we equally match and we equally bring what needs to be brought to the song to make it. I'm going to hold it down for the fellas, and she going to hold it down for the ladies. That's how I go. Hey, man. Y'all got any shout-outs? Well, first, yo, of course, live from the block. Shout out live from the block. Osama the Great. Osama, you know, those bar snobs, 500. Five. Um, everybody over there, you know, we love y'all. Um, Straight up. I want to shout out everybody in Chicago, of course, all of my family and friends, Chicago, Michigan, Atlanta, just everybody out there. Too many names to names. We, you know, been too many places, but everybody, y'all know who y'all is, and y'all know we love y'all. Uh, shout out to my mama. Shout out to all the positive people, man. All the entrepreneurs, all the people that 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 are leaders and not followers. All the people that are seeking wisdom, man. All the people that's just trying to do what you can with what you're giving, man. Straight up. Hey, man. Anybody want to get in contact with y'all for any bookings or features? How can they get? How can they get in touch with y'all? Remedy Music Two, One Two. At gmail.com, man. Remedy Music 2 at gmail.com. Y'all can look us up on uh, Facebook, uh, The Remedy, Dallas, Texas. Y'all will see us. It's probably a couple remedies out, but we the hardest one. So, hey, right. <laughs> man. Um, yeah. Also, that's our it. individual pages, you can look them up Instagram or Facebook. A Sinatra. A Sinatra. And for me, T Lafayette. Twitter, The Remedy. Just The Remedy, right? Or The Remedy 2. The Remedy, A. Sinatra, T. Lafayette. You'll find us everywhere. Yeah. Man, well, T. Lafayette, A. Sinatra, The Remedy, our Real Life Street Stars. We fucking with everything y'all doing, man. Quick Fix out now. Go check that shit out. It's for free. The album will not be free. Definitely. We do want the motherfucking paper. <laughs> so, man, All we ready. support y'all, man. man. Thank y'all for having man. us. Appreciate hey, it. man. Real Life. Shout out to Real Street Stars, nigga. Moolah. Hey.